After the death of the Prophet وسلم, Fatima approached the Caliph Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with them both, regarding inheriting a piece of land that the Prophet وسلم, had owned called Fedek. Abu Bakr rejected this request by saying that he heard Allah's Messenger saying about the inheritance of Prophets, our property cannot be inherited, and whatever we leave is to be sent in charity. Abu Bakr then said, by Allah, I will not leave the procedure I saw Allah's Messenger following during his lifetime relating to this property. The issue of Fadak and the inheritance of the Prophet وسلم, is a popular topic amongst the Shia, and the story is one that Shia children grow up on in an effort to indoctrinate them with hatred towards Abu Bakr. <laughs> The Shia propagandists feel no qualms in stirring up emotions by exploiting and reviving issues and disagreements that died hundreds of years ago. Fatima, that is... Ahlus Sunnah does not focus on the story of Fadak, namely to prevent senseless fitna out of the respect for two great personalities of Islam, Abu Bakr and Fatima. But the reality, however, is that the Shia retelling of Fadak is completely biased, contrary to facts, and yet another typical taqiyya oriented deception and manipulation of history designed to malign Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. We find that an objective analysis of Fadak not only absolves Abu Bakr of all wrongdoing, but also exposes the falsity of the Shia paradigm. In this video, we will be presenting some reliable Sunni and Shia reports, which support the judgment of Abu Bakr regarding Fadak and the inheritance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First, let's look at a Shia hadith. Abu Abdullah salam, said, Al-Anfal is such property for the acquisition of which no camels or horses are used and no arms expeditions are undertaken. It is the property that may come as the result of negotiated settlement or certain people would give with their own hands, may come from a barren land or from inside the valleys. Such properties belong to the Messenger of Allah and it will belong to the Imam, meaning leader, after the Messenger of Allah. The Imam will spend them as he may consider proper. As is apparent, according to this narration, property of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is not inherited by his family, but is given to the leader who decides how it will be best spent, just as what happened with the land of Fadak. Esteemed Shia scholar al Kalaini, the author of Al-Kafi, adds, The case of Al-Anfal is different. It belongs to the Messenger only. Of such properties was Fadak that belonged to the Messenger of Allah only. It is because he and Amir al-Mu'mineen salam considered it and there no one else took part. The name al fay therefore does not apply to it. Al-Anfal applies to it. Similar to Al-Anfal are such properties as the marshes, mines, oceans and the wilderness. They all belong to the Imam exclusively. Now let's have a look at a Sunni hadith which is similar to the Shia one and also supports the judgment of Abu Bakr in regards to Fadak. Fatima came to Abu Bakr and said, O oh, successor of Rasulullah, did you inherit the Messenger of Allah or his family? He said, his family. She asked, then what of the share of the Messenger? He replied, I heard the Messenger of Allah say, if Allah, the Majestic and Great, gave a Prophet a blessing then took his soul, it becomes for the one who took his place after him. So I decided that I should distribute it amongst the Muslims. Fatima told him, you and the Messenger of Allah know best. So as you can see from reliable Sunni and Shia hadiths, we find that after the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the property given to him will belong to his successor, the next leader of Muslims. Since Abu Bakr became the Imam after the Prophet, the property that was granted by Allah to the Prophet became the property of the leader, i.e. Abu Bakr. And it was upon Abu Bakr to manage it in order to benefit the Muslims. After finding that the Shia position is pretty weak in regards to Fadak, and that their own hadith support the judgment of Abu Bakr, Shia propagandists might switch to raising questions about the personal property of the Prophet ﷺ. But in this case too, they are let down by their own reliable reports, which claim there is no materialistic inheritance of Prophets. In this Shia hadith, al rada said, All the Prophets which the Honorable, the Exalted God sent, forbade wine and confessed that God would do whatever he wills the prophets would leave behind al kondo meaning chewing gum, as inheritance. This implies that they would leave behind nothing. Similarly, in Sahih al-Bukhari we read, 
When Allah's Apostle died, he did not leave any dirham or dinar, i.e. money, a slave or a slave woman or anything else except his white mule, his arms and a piece of land which he had given in charity. And in another Shia hadith we read, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and the scholars are the heirs of the prophets, and the prophets did not leave dinars and dirhams as inheritance, but they left knowledge. Therefore, whosoever takes knowledge has taken a great portion. And again, in a similar Sunni hadith, which says, The scholars are the heirs of the prophets, and the prophets leave neither dinar nor dirham, leaving only knowledge, and he who takes it has an abundant portion. The authentic Shia hadiths can also be explained as, it's terming only the scholars as the heirs of the prophets, so it negates the worldly inheritance from the Prophet So it can be said that, because the prophets did not leave dinars or dirhams as inheritance, and left knowledge, that is why only the scholars are the true inheritors of the prophets, and there is no materialistic inheritance of prophets. Now let's put all of this to the side and ask the question, what did Abu Bakr do with Fadak? Did he keep it to himself? Did he use it on his own family? Did he build a palace from the money from the profits of the crops? No, no, and no. In the very same narration that we looked at in the beginning of this video, Abu Bakr quotes the Prophet وسلم, saying, the family of Muhammad may take their provisions from this property. In other words, Abu Bakr is following the instructions of the Prophet وسلم, by giving back to the family of the Prophet by spreading the yield through his family. That is also exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did when he was alive. Another question is, did Abu Bakr's family inherit the property after he died? Again, no. And again, Abu Bakr followed the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ by leaving it for the next leader to decide how to make use of it. Now, there are many questions about Fedak and the topics is intricate details that need to be covered without a doubt. For more details, please refer to the links in the video description. Inshallah, if you share this video and subscribe, I'm going to get our resident expert on the topic of FedEx, Hani, to make a series on it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.